Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation, keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. Welcome to Mission Evolution Radio Show with Gwilda Wiaka, bringing together today's leading experts to uncover ever-deepening spiritual truths and the latest scientific developments in support of the evolution of humankind. For more information on Mission Evolution Radio with Gwilda Wiaka, visit www.missionevolution.org. And now, here's the host of Mission Evolution, Miss Gwilda Wiaka. Hello, dear friends. This is Mission Evolution Radio Show, where we share innovative thoughts with today's leading scientific and esoteric experts, supporting the path to unity and enlightenment. I'm Gwilda Wiecka. This hour, we'll be exploring vital force and the evolving human body. It's been prophesied by many cultures that during this time in history, we would enter an era supporting the evolution of consciousness. Some sources indicate all we need to do is be present during the Aquarian Age, and le voila, we will evolve. However, there is a problem with that concept. Evolution of consciousness involves evolution of frequency. For an individual to evolve, they must be able to accommodate the increase in frequency on all levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, or energetic. The natural world is extremely adaptable and adjusts to the cyclic shifts in frequencies, Humans, on the other hand, have separated themselves from nature to their extreme detriment. Artificial lighting, chemicals, pesticides, EMFs, processed foods, GMOs, and the list goes on. All these things are outside of the natural order and create restrictions to frequency. They also compromise our vital energy, shortening our lifespan, and making us increasingly ill. Are there other ways our vital energy is being compromised we don't even know about? How can we expect to evolve if we're too impacted to accommodate the progression of frequency? What can we do to counteract the many compromises we're exposed to? Our guest this hour may have some answers to these vital questions. With this is Dr. Stephen Sinatra, author of many books, including Health Revelations for Heaven. Dr. Sinatra is a board-certified cardiologist and assistant clinical professor of medicine at University of Connecticut School of Medicine. He's a certified bioenergetic psychotherapist and nutrition and anti-aging specialist. He's the founder of www.heartmdinstitute.com, an informational website dedicated to promoting public awareness of integrative medicine, as well as www.vervana.com, 
a website focused on high vibrational and living foods. His website, heartmdinstitute.com. Dr. Sinatra, thanks for joining us on Mission Evolution. Oh, it's great to be here, Gwilder, and a very nice introduction explaining about what vibration is. Very, very sweet. Oh, thank you. You you know, your background seems firmly rooted in traditional medicine until you get to the part about you being a bioenergetic psychotherapist. What is that? Well, basically, um, I studied with Alexander Lowen. Um, He was one of the last uh, disciples of Wilhelm Reich uh, over in Germany. And bioenergetic psychotherapy is a form of therapy where tensions and emotions are locked in the body. Mm -hmm. And uh, if a person went to a psychiatrist and did talk therapy, I mean, talk therapy uh, is good to a point, but a lot of our emotions and feelings are stuffed in our muscles, in in our joints, in our organs, so to speak. So bioenergetic psychotherapy is a way of facilitating those locked, blocked emotions out of the body. And when that occurs... Uh, This helps free up the person of emotional stress and tension, and uh, it redirects the person uh, back to a healing modality as opposed to illness and sickness or being unwell, which I feel uh, results from a lot of psychological, emotional upset and trauma. Well, you know, years ago, um, um, I think it was... um Louise Hayes came up with her little blue book where she um, had uh, studied and figured out that different organs relate to different emotional um, issues. So in other words, if you have an emotional issue, the illness will break out in a particular organ. Does that go along with what you're talking about here? Yes. and I mean, one of the reasons why I wrote the book Heartbreak and Heart Disease, for example, was that, uh, you know, we all experience heartbreak on many different levels. I mean, uh, most of us experience it in our childhood, for example. And a lot of those feelings of heartbreak are are repressed. And I grew up in the era uh, where uh, spanking children, for example, was uh, was the thing to do. It was the spirit of the day, you know. Uh, And basically, when we, uh, you know, have these emotions that are locked in the body, um, for example, heart disease. Uh, one of the aspects of heart disease is the inability to breathe fully and properly. So um, if a person has locked tension in their chest, for example, uh, and, and if a person doesn't facilitate that tension or get that tension released, and I've always felt as a, as a psychotherapist, whether I practice gestalt psychotherapy or bioenergetic psychotherapy, one of the best emotions in freeing up heartbreak, which could lead to heart disease, is by crying and sobbing. I think crying and sobbing, uh, where you're facilitating energy in and out of the lung, you know, through the uh, windpipe, uh, freeing up the diaphragm. Whenever you do this, you're alleviating tension in the chest, and whenever you alleviate tension, uh, you're you're freeing up the possibility of uh, not getting heart disease, which I feel is related to a lot of uh, you know psychological and emotional insults, you know, as we're growing up. Right, and then it continues on. <laughs> would would you please explain what you mean by vibration? Well, vibration basically um, uh, comes from the vibratory state of our cells. I mean, um, uh, all our cells vibrate at frequencies. And um, one of the things that I learned over the years of being an author and a, and a, and a, and a doctor, a cardiologist, for example, is that I firmly believe that if the vibratory state of our cells are happy, and what I mean by that, if our cells can take in nutrients you know, easily and expel waste products easily, uh, that means the cell is vibrating. And when the cell is vibrating, that means it's less prone to illness and disease. In other words, it's well instead of being unwell. And what really blew me away, Gwilder, was there was a a research study done by MIT researchers. This was amazing, where they looked at the vibratory nature of cells. And what they found was that um, uh, people who experience illness, let's say from like, they were looking at red blood cells, like from from like a malarial parasite, for example. Uh, They found that the vibratory nature of these, quote, you know, sick cells went down. And uh, uh, to me, that was like nirvana. I mean, I mean, that's a, to me, that's the whole essence of illness and disease. So the secret to, let's say, optimizing your health is really to support the vibratory nature of our cells. Whenever the cells are vibrating or dancing, 
um, then basically we're healthy. And uh, I always felt that way as in not only being a, a therapist, but being a cardiologist as well. Mm. So what is vital force? Where does that fit in here? Well, vital force is basically uh, the nature uh, of our cells. In other words, uh, if our cells are happy and they're dancing and they're, you know, uh, taking in energy and expelling weights, uh, then the vital force is excelled. And whenever you can excel a uh, vital force, uh, basically, you know, when it's, when we make a statement about our vital force, for example, uh, uh, we're more alive. And, uh, uh, you know, the vital force uh, comes from, you know, many different aspects of healing. I mean, uh, you know, it's been called chi energy, for example, or prana energy. And, and, and whenever our vital force is high, uh, we, we make a statement to the world. And, and that statement usually is collectively found in our health. So I've always felt that uh, when our vital energy is very, very high, uh, then uh, we're looking at wellness as opposed to sickness. Remember, six cells the energy decreases in six cells. And, uh, you know, I, I actually learned that not only in, uh, in college, but also in medical school as well. Uh, this vibratory nature of, uh, of health is what really attracted me as a cardiologist. And I'll tell you this, Gilda, even prehistoric man, I mean, think about this, even prehistoric man realized that all life depended upon a vibrating heart. You remember, the, the heart would vibrate, it would pulsate, right? So if the heart didn't pulsate, it didn't vibrate, uh, then life would cease. So uh, I think vibration is really one of the keys to health. It's, it's just amazing, isn't it, how it, it, it starts at the cell or, or smaller, but it continues on out to the heart, the organ itself, to our breath in, breath out. It's all about movement in and movement out, isn't it? Yes, yes. And like, like, I says, like I said before, if our cells can breathe in energy, um, and, and, and that's why as a therapist, uh, I've always felt that um, uh, whether you laugh or you cry or you breathe deeply, uh, I think breathing is one of the major keys to health. Um, and, and that's why as a bioenergetic therapist and as a cardiologist, I've always felt that one of the best emotional releases we can do in our lifetime is to cry and sob because this helps to uh, free up stagnation in the chest wall. It frees up stagnation in the diaphragm. It unlocks our chest and it improves our vital force. So when, whenever you can improve the vital force of an individual, not only the cell, but also you know, the organ and also the person, the persona, uh, then, I, uh, then I've always believed that, um, uh, you know, Freeing up these locked-in emotions is really the key to health. And, you know, when I wrote the book Heartbreak and Heart Disease, uh, I've always felt that heartbreak was a major factor in heart disease. And we all suffer heartbreak, Wilder. I mean, we've all had heartbreak in childhood. Uh, so if you can free up those locked-in energies uh, well, we're and going basically to, expel we're going to have those to energies... You'll we're going to have to discuss heartbreak on the other side of a commercial break. Dr. Sinatra and I will return shortly, so don't you go away. You're listen, listening to Mission Evolution Radio Show, coming to you on the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Don't go away. We'll be right back. It's hard to listen to the news without realizing we're living in volatile, unprecedented times. Yet never has there been such an opportunity to transform the human condition. As old structures fail, where can we find the guidance to co-create a better way? Find Your Path Home is an ever-evolving, leading-edge information, education, and healing resource center designed to support and guide you on your path to unity and enlightenment. Based on sound principles employed by shaman worldwide, we provide techniques that can support you through the current transitions, offering online shamanic classes, 
international long-distance shamanic healing sessions, complimentary Mission Evolution radio episodes and Stairway to Heaven TV vignettes, seminars, retreats, and much more. All of this can be found on findyourpathhome.com. So I was watching the X-Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens, and they kept repeating to me over and over again, Simultv.com, Simultv.com. What's Simultv.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean Simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a Simultv.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now that you mention it, I remember now last night, I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great-grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about Simultv.com. She even spelled it out for me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, sonny boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about Simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Welcome back. This is the Mission Evolution Radio Show, missionevolution.org. We're dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. Our guest this hour is board certified cardiologist, Dr. Stephen Sinatra. His website, heartmdinstitute.com. Dr. Sinatra, we were talking about, and I find it interesting, um, the, the very thing, the first thing we do when we come into the world as a rule is cry, and then we're taught not to. And you're telling me that crying releases these stored um, energies or emotions that, that compromise our life. Yes, and, uh, and, and again, I came from the generation, I mean, I heard, you know, you know from my dad, uh, you know, if you don't stop crying, I'll give you, you know, if you, if you don't stop crying, I'll give you something to cry about, basically. And, and, I, and I grew up with that energy in, in my own household where um, I was in a generation where children weren't allowed to cry. And, uh, you know, it comes from the p- baby boomers. I mean, our parents, you know, lived during World War II and stuff like that and, and during the Holocaust and, and, and those situations. And, and basically... Um, that generation frowned on crying. And, right. Uh, and so, so the uh, release that we experience through crying or through laughing, you know, all these emotions have been judged against. And so we end up storing them in our body. Is that correct? We do. We do. In fact, uh, that's why laughing is so therapeutic. I mean, Norman Cousins showed that, you know, years ago, you know, when he was suffering from alkalosis spondylitis, you know, a very severe and painful disorder of, of the spine. But crying uh, it literally frees up the energy like laughing. And when you laugh a lot, and it's amazing, when I used to work with uh, uh, Dr. Alexander Lowen, um, uh, one of the maneuvers he would do with me, he would, he would bend me over what's called a bioenergetic stool where your chest is wide open. And at one point, I started to laugh. And he said to me, oh, you think this is funny, huh? So he started tickling me. I couldn't believe it. And I'm laughing and laughing. And then when you laugh hard enough, Sometimes you can cry uh, Mm -hmm. because he was trying to get at the emotion of crying. He always felt that if he can get his clients to sob or cry, this would free up the deep locked tension, not only in the diaphragm, but also the chest. And whenever you can relieve that tension, uh, this is really healing for the body. So Mm. I, and, and, and the science proves it. I mean, even in tears, for example, there's endorphins, you know, there's biochemicals in the tears we have that are absolutely healing. So, um, uh, when we heard the messages as children, you know, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, this sets us up for illness later on in life. So that's why, you know, it's amazing, Gwilda. I went to a movie. It was um, uh, years ago. It was a Gene Hackman movie. Uh, and the movie reminded me of uh, actually my high school wrestling coach. And through all the therapy I did with Lowen, I couldn't cry. But when I went to the movie, it touched my internal sadness. And I started to cry. And I I ended up seeing the movie five times because I realized how therapeutic, you know, sobbing and crying out to the body because of all the therapy I did with uh, Alexander Lowing. So, you know, know, it's very, very important for us to really get in touch with those emotions. I'd like to change directions just a little bit because what we're talking about here is how emotions lock down our ability to vibrate if they're locked in the body. What do vibration and vital force have to do with our ability to evolve as as individuals and as a species? Well, well, basically, the um, 
the vital force uh, is really our, our chi energy. Um, I mean, the the uh, Chinese called it uh, chi, basically uh, Japanese kai, uh, the prana by the Hindus. Um, uh, you know, the, the Hebrews and uh, called it breath of God. But basically, this vital force, uh, I believe, um, is the energy of our body. Now, a scientific type like myself, a physician. Uh, who has studied uh, energy all his life, not only uh, in psychotherapy, but also in the pulsating heart scenario I talked about before and, in, and studying cardiac catheterizations and looking at videotapes of hundreds of people with you know, a pulsating heart. Uh, the whole aspect uh, for me is mitochondrial dynamics. I remember going to anti-aging conferences you know, 20, 30 years ago and uh, all the speakers were talking about growth hormone and testosterone and, and female hormones as being the essence of life. I always felt that it was the mitochondria, these little organelles in our cells uh, that are really the, the whole essence, and the, which contains the whole mystery of our chi energy. And you wouldn't believe it, Gwilda, in the last like five or ten years, there's been thousands and thousands of articles in the medical literature really discussing about these, uh, discussing the mitochondrial dynamics of, of basically, if you can fortify your mitochondria, these little organelles of cells, uh, if you can protect your mitochondria from uh, environmental insults, for example, or trans fats or you know, chemicals in the environment or heavy metals, uh, then your cells will vibrate more. Your cells will be more effective. And uh, uh, it's the effectiveness of expelling weights and taking in nutrients that really determines the vibratory capacity of our, health, of our cells, which really determines the health of our body. So ultimately, does, here's the chicken and the egg question. Does vital force come from within or outside the individual? Well, it comes from within. But again, outside environmental, environmental insults or, or psychological traumas can affect it. Uh, so, so basically, um, let's just take an infant that's born into the world and they come out crying. The vital force is huge. It's, it's, uh, you know, they're not contaminated, although n nowadays today, you know, with all the EMS from the environment and all the toxins in the environment, you know, we have more contaminated children uh, than we did 50 years ago. Uh, uh, but basically, when a child comes into the world, uh, they, they, they're coming into a, uh, you know, a sacred place uh, where they, were, they came out of the mother's womb and that the mother is clean in the sense that she's not contaminated. Uh, then I believe she'll have a healthier bo uh, baby. And I'll tell you this, Gwilda, I think the field of the future uh, right now is with women doctors and women naturopaths, for example, is uh, preparing a woman for childbirth. Uh, you know, years ago, nobody concer was concerned about that. But, uh, but now I really feel that we need to detoxify a woman as well as a man before they consider having a child because detoxification is one of the major factors of improving the vibratory state of our cells. The more so we how, have how do we, in the body, we have weaker cells. How do we, what, how do, we do detoxification? What, what's the best way to do that? I mean, we're all dealing with this, right? Oh, yeah. There's toxins all through the environment. Uh, we have the man-made, you know, electromagnetic fields. You know, you can't feel, feel them, see them, or taste them, but they're penetrating our DNA and they're, and they're causing, uh, you know, uh, multiple DNA hits in cancer, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, there are, you know, toxins all over the place. There's heavy metals, there are insecticides, there's pesticides. I mean, and, and basically, um, a, a good detoxification program uh, we all should be putting into our lives. I mean, you know, 50 years ago, we didn't think about detoxification. But now, since the body, our bodies are more toxic, you know, we need to help free up these cells of the, these toxic energies because it lowers our vibration. So it makes sense to put detoxification into a program. Now, there's many ways of detoxing the body, for example. I mean, the simplest way that I know is putting our bare feet on the ground. And, and uh, I, I believe you and I have discussed it, the beneficial of the physiological benefits of grounding before. But basically, I mean, people can, you know, take in substances, for example, or nutraceuticals to help detoxify. And, and one of the worst organs today that we see in our environment is what we call a fatty liver. 
for example. Uh, there's so many toxins in the environment that can cause a fatty liver. A lot of alcohol can cause a fatty liver. And detoxifying the liver is really vital because the liver is, one, is the organ of detoxification. So even if a person took a little milk thistle or ate artichokes, for example, these bioflavonoids are very supportive to liver health. Uh, uh, ashwagandha, for example, uh, which I take every day, uh, you know, I believe in, improves the uh, uh, vibratory nature of our cells. So whenever we think of vibration, now we have to think of detoxification. And, um, uh, you know, when I finish this interview with you, I, you know, I do a little workout in my basement. And after I work out, after I get a little sweat from doing various exercises and, and, and lifting, you know, some light weights, I always go into a far infrared sauna. I turn the sauna on for, uh, uh, you know, 20 minutes. I get it nice and warm. Because remember this, Gwilder, the best way of detoxing the body and getting rid of what we call our subcutaneous toxins, heavy metals, uh, you know, pesticides and insecticides, is sweating. So sweating, we, you know, because a lot of these toxins are beneath our skin, and we, when we sweat these toxins out, uh, we're cleansing the body. And, so you know, let me uh, see if I've got even, this right. Even we, the American Indians did this for years, you know, in sweat oh, yeah, lodges. Oh, yeah, sweat, the sweat lodges. Yeah. So the, there's ba basic organs of detoxification outside of the liver, right? So there's the liver Correct. and the skin. What else do we have? The lungs. The, the, the GI tract. I mean, I mean, uh, the GI tract, the lungs, and the liver are probably the big three. I mean, even the the eyes. When 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 we when we talked about crying and and uh, you know getting rid of toxins, even in the tears, you know. Uh, so any way we, we can uh, help the body uh, release energy, uh, I think that's the key. So um, let's let let's talk about detoxification in the bowel. I mean. You know, uh, when people get more and more constipated, so to speak, you know, when they're not alleviating uh, the the energy in their large bowel, for example, uh, these toxins can get reabsorbed. And uh, basically, I've always felt that uh, bowel cleansing is really extraordinarily important in uh, in keeping the body healthy. Now, how do you do that? Well, it, you know. It, it can be a problem for some people where they they may have to rely on uh, you know colon therapies or detoxification enemas or things like that. But the average person doesn't need to do that. All you need to do is increase the fiber in a diet. If we can increase like forty to fifty grams of fiber. You well, know, we're going you know, to eat, we're going to have to like uh, that. Again. You will detoxify, believe me. <laughs> you will. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to have to take another short pause. Dr. Sinatra and I will return to our discussion on the other side of this break. So you folks stay right there. This is the Mission Evolution Radio Show. We're coming to you on the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. How would your life change if you could develop the business and personal skills that you need in order to make more money? Do you want to learn how to achieve your big life goals faster? Then go to findhiddenmoney.com and get the Goal For It online course. The course teaches you how you can set and achieve your biggest goals while completely overcoming the roadblocks to your goals so that you can realize your dreams and imagine more success. Go to findhiddenmoney.com. Memorable dynamic presentations are a not-so-secret weapon in the business world. Do you have a powerful message that must be shared, but you haven't found a way to deliver that message? Do you want to be known as a top public speaker who gets amazing results? Are you ready to create and deliver your powerful message? Thomas Hides can help you create and deliver your speech to get the results you desire. Visit IconQuality.com. Did you expect your business to flourish, but instead it plateaued or didn't get off the ground yet? Would you like to achieve massive goals and discover new sources of income within your business? When you're ready to experience that type of success with fast results, Cindy Hendricks is the business coach for you. Her work with entrepreneurs and business owners has been life-changing. To get you and your business where you want to be, go to imaginemoresuccess.com. 
Has the fear of public speaking stalled your business or personal life? What would you give to develop and maintain supreme confidence? Have an invaluable private program to always perform at your best. Imagine how you would feel. You can have all that and so much more today with Thomas Hyde's life-changing course called Number One Fear Unleashed. Visit NumberOneFear.com and be liberated from your fear of public speaking. Welcome back. This is the Mission Evolution Radio Show, MissionEvolution.org, bringing leading-edge information supporting the path to enlightenment. We're speaking with board-certified cardiologist and author of Health Revelations for Heaven, Dr. Stephen Sinatra. His website, HeartMDInstitute.com. Dr. Sinatra, one thing I'd like to get into a little bit here is, is the effects of starting, you know, our frequency is being compromised. Our cells are vibrating slower. I mean, does that, doesn't that impact even our effect in the world, our ability to move our will into the world? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, um, the more we vibrate uh, our cells, the, um, <laughs> the more open we are and the more we are in, in the world, so to speak. I mean, I mean think of this, Gwilda. Um, you, you see, you know, young couples in love, right? Uh, you know, I, I think being in love um, is one of the best ways of vibration. And, you know, I've asked cardiologists this question. Um, you know, because uh, a lot of cardiologists like myself um, who believe in the emotional aspects of heart disease, I ask them the question, you know, have you ever seen um, a young person with a heart attack? And we've seen multiple people with, young, with heart attacks. I mean, we see heart attacks as early as 16 years of age. I mean, oh, I've my seen, goodness. Uh, uh, I mean, in the 20s and 30s. And, 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 I, and I asked other board-certified cardiologists that, that think like I do, I said, have you ever seen a person with a full-blown heart attack who is in romantic love and nobody can, could come up with a case and I couldn't come up with a case myself. That's fascinating. And, and that's how powerful love can be as it heals. Now think about this, Gwilda. There was a Jim Lynch who wrote The Broken Heart. Um, he was instrumental in talking about the impact that uh, pets have on our health. And he wrote The Broken Heart, for example. Uh, he's a psychologist in the Baltimore area. And um, his premise was that, you know, a, a a dog who loves you unconditionally is healing to the body. And it's absolutely true. I mean, if I had patients coming home from a heart attack, and if they came home to, let's say, an empty house, a lonely house, or a judgmental spouse, that their incidence of recurrent hospitalization was four times higher oh my than if they goodness. came home to a house that was full of love or a, or a pet or a dog. So I used to, you know, when, when, when I realized this data, you know, I had three dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have two chows and an elk out because the unconditional <laughs> love of a pet. Yeah, the unconditional love of a pet, uh, and if you take in that love, is absolutely instrumental in uh, in healing the body. So love heals. There's no doubt about it. And 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 the opposite is also true. If if you have resentment, remember we talked about Louise Hay, for example. You know, she was convinced that uh, women who suffered breast cancer, for example, had intense resentment in their life. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and basically, this is a very, very toxic emotion. You know, anger, hate, jealousy, these emotions are toxic to the body. These negative uh, hostility, shame, fear, anger, all these toxic emotions counteract, you know, the uh, emotional aspect of love, which heals the body. So I'll tell you, I think falling in love uh, whether it's with a dog or whether it's a, uh, you know, uh, a spouse or, you know, uh, a job, for example. I mean, I mean, it could be anything, but falling in love or having passion for something in your life is truly healing for the heart. I mean, this I believe as a board certified cardiologist and as a psychotherapist as well. <laughs> well, if, if, but if we're, if our life force is really reduced uh, because of all the toxins in our system or blocked emotions or this or that, do we even have the energy to have passion about things? When you get in that deadlock, how do you turn that around? Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, when people are depressed, their energy goes down. And listen, depression increases, increases the incidence of heart disease by 400%. Mm. I mean, this is, this is a very, very scary symptom. Uh, no, the, uh, 
Uh, depression, I think, is one of the uh, worst illnesses anybody can face because it, it's a killer of our aliveness. It's a killer of our vital energy. And uh, uh, one of the best ways of freeing up depression uh, is basically talking about it. In other words, and crying and sobbing and, 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 and experiencing uh, or, or getting rid of the body of, of, of that uh, uh, ugh, you know that feeling of, of depression that that low energy it's really horrible and I can tell you as a physician and uh, I was a I was a psychiatric resident in my training and uh, uh, you know being a therapist uh, you know depression I think is one of the ugliest and toughest illnesses to treat but once you do treat it and you and the patient becomes more alive more vibrant it goes away in a flash it's unbelievable how depression can be alleviated when the person gets their vital energy back, it's very, very heartwarming. So how do you get the vital energy back when a person is in that lockdown of depression? And, and which comes first, the chicken or the egg, the depression well, or the ag- low vital energy? Again, uh, you recognize the depression and, you, and this is what you tell the patient. You don't say, oh, don't be depressed. Don't be. They are depressed. And basically <laughs> you have to get in with them. And you have to try to uh, emote with them. How you know? In other words, try to feel what they're feeling. Try to connect with them on some level. And the best level is if you can get your depressed patient to keep crying and crying and crying, and to release all that heartbreak, and and to tr- and really expel the body of all these negative emotions. Uh, I think that depression suddenly vanishes. And I've seen this so many times. You know, my patients. Because let's face it. Depression is one of the emotions that leads to heart disease. And I've had many patients in my practice uh, that were depressed. And, and it's probably one of the reasons why I became a gestalt and a bioenergetic psychotherapist, because I saw the relationship between depression and heart disease frequently well, in my patients, whether you're young yeah, or me, older. Let me ask you this. Um, are you telling me that depression is a result of locked emotions versus an emotion itself? Well, depression um, can be a, a any emotion. In other words, um, if a child loses a patient at an early age, for example, uh, the heartbreak that's, that's associated with the loss of a vital connection in our lives uh, can be repressed. And then later on in life, uh, that patient, for example, uh, can get depressed, but they don't, under, they don't understand why they're depressed. They don't, you know, they're married, they have kids. But a lot of it can be due from early locked childhood situations, such as, let's say, the loss of a, of a parent, which is a devastating uh, factor in, in, in a lot of children. But once you know, they realize that this was a locked emotion that suddenly is escaping now, surfacing in their 30s, 40s, or 50s, um, then if they see the right you know, health professional uh, and they get rid of it, they become much more alive in their life again. Um, and I've seen this, you know, over and over where, you know, depression can be a harbinger of, you know, heart attack and heart disease. Uh, it's, it's one thing that I saw over and over again. You know, you, we even speak of it being disheartened, being depressed is being disheartened. It's like it takes away from the heart, doesn't it? It does. It absolutely does. Um, you know, some people wear their heart on their sleeve and some people don't. And, 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 uh, and, and, I, and I really feel that um, if a person can reconnect uh, with their heartbreak, and again, that's why I wrote that book years ago. It's, I, I think it was my best book. I think it's even better than Heaven and Earth. You know, but, and I wrote it in my early 40s, which is amazing. I mean, I, I can't believe uh, you know, I could write a book like that back then. But uh, I have to tell you, I, 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 I really think that emotional factors – uh, are much more powerful in heart disease. You know, everybody is concerned about cholesterol and stuff like that. Cholesterol to me is a joke compared to, uh, you know, the locked in uh, emotional factors that we all grow up with. Yeah, it's, 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 you know, and this needs to be out there because people are trying to, you know, run enough to take care of your heart or don't eat eggs or this or that and the next thing. And that they're wearing all this oppressive um, emotion that hasn't moved for years. It's no wonder the poor heart breaks down around it. Exactly. You got it, Gilda. That's, that's, <laughs> that's well said. You know, the breakdown of the heart's energetic barriers, because uh, the heart holds in our depression. You know, the, um, uh, one of the books I was going to write, actually it was going to be a chapter in my high vibrational book, is the heart-brain hotline. There are conversations that go between the heart and the brain all the time. 
Uh, and these conversations exist. And, uh, you know, we used to think that the brain is the king of the body. Uh-uh. It's not so. It's the heart. The heart rules the body. And well, is the absolute that, connective point, isn't it? I mean, the, it is. the electromagnetic field that the heart puts out actually is our way to connecting with everything around us. Exactly. Exactly. And, and there's been studies that show with the vagus nerve and everything else like that. But, you know, I, I think the heart is the ruler of our body. <laughs> That's why when people wear their heart in their sleeve, for example, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, the, these people are, uh, have a lot of emotion out and stuff like that. I think this is healthy for the body. You know, anybody who cries easily, I think, uh, is freeing the body of toxicity. And, you know, the more you live in the truth, you know, you talked about truth a little bit earlier. Uh, whenever your life is a lie, and I've seen this over and over again in my practice, Quilder, I've seen corporate executives climb the corporate ladder. They have a massive heart attack. They're staring at the ceiling in the CCU for three, four, five days or a week, and they, I, I come see them, and uh, you know they're depressed and they're upset. And I would ask them, I go, well, do you, do you have any inclination of why you got this heart attack? And you know what a lot of these corporate executives told me? I'm in the wrong job, doctor. I climbed the wrong ladder. My mm. life is a lie. And that's one of the reasons why I wrote the book, Heartbreak and Heart Disease, because, you know, um, even these corporate executives, you know, if you don't get fulfillment in your job, for example, you know, uh, for a male, it's vitally important. And years ago, you know, men used to have heart disease more, heart disease more than women. But one of the reasons why I wrote the book, Heart Sense for Women, in the year 2000, was that the graphs crossed. Now more women are getting heart disease and heart attacks than men. Just, just and, amazing. Uh, what used to protect women years ago, now it doesn't protect women anymore. So women need well, to be more like women again, not to get heart disease. Again, but they're becoming more like men. <laughs> uh, well, again, we need to take another short break. Dr. Dr. Sinatra and I will be back shortly. So don't you leave us now. This is Mission Evolution Radio Show on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, www xzbn.net If you are looking for a safe, zero-calorie, natural option to the harmful artificial sweeteners on the market today, just like sugar is what you're looking for. Just Like Sugar is a wonderful natural alternative for those health-conscious people who choose a calorie-restricted diet with a great, pure, sweet flavor that tastes just like sugar. Just Like Sugar is a great natural option for people suffering from diabetes and may be useful in restricted diet programs where standard sugars are not allowed and does not cause a laxative effect of some other sweeteners. Just Like Sugar comprises a perfect blend of chicory root fiber, natural calcium, natural vitamin C, and Just Like Sugar sweetness comes from the natural flavors from the peel of the orange. Just Like Sugar is a natural alternative to harmful artificial sweeteners and will change the way that you believe all natural sweetener products taste. Just Like Sugar is available at your local Whole Foods markets, Wild Oats markets, Henry's, Sun Harvest, and many other fine natural food stores in the U.S., Canada, and worldwide. They are here, and they've been here for thousands of years, making their presence known in the shadows. They might be seen by a lonely motorist on a deserted road late at night, or by a frightened and confused husband in the bedroom he is sharing with his wife. But who are they? What do they want? Why are they here? Perhaps most concerning, has the government been aware of their presence all along? The new book by Ellie Marzulli, UFO Disclosure, The 70-Year Cover-Up Exposed, delves into the world of UFOs. Can full disclosure be soon? Order now and receive a free hour and 37-minute DVD on the UFO phenomenon, UFOs Are Real. Get both the book and the DVD, a $40 value, for only $19.99. To order your book and DVD today, go to lamarzuli.net. That's L-A-M-A-R-Z-U-L-L-I dot net. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 
15 exclusive channels like Exxon, Sci-Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Welcome back. This is Mission Evolution Radio Show, bringing together gifted people of service to the world. To suggest a topic or guest, email us, info at missionevolution.org. Our guest this hour is board-certified cardiologist, Dr. Stephen Sinatra. His website, heartmdinstitute.com. Doctor, one thing that I have noticed uh, is when people have had a heart attack or a heart transplant, um, one universal symptom afterwards is depression. Can you explain that for us? Well, in anybody with an insult to their life, uh, you know, whether it's you know a heart transplant or a heart attack, I mean, these are vital, you know, life-threatening situations. You know, it's almost like a wake-up call for a lot of people, um, and uh, you know, some people get it that it is a wake-up call and they can rechannel their life in another direction. Uh, other people don't get it, and uh, they they um, uh, end up coming back, you know, with a recurrent heart attack or heart failure, and it gets worse. So um, I've had many patients in my practice, for example, that realized that their heart attack was really a gift in disguise because the heart attack enabled them to get on the road, let's say, better traveled or <laughs> instead of the road, less traveled, so to speak. So, you know, any illness in the person, whether it's cancer, heart disease, you know, any illness, Gwilda, uh, can be a wake-up call where it can get the person on the right track and get their energies in sync. And I mean their spiritual, emotional, and physical energies. Once they get them in sync with one another instead of battling one another, um, you know, they'll be more alive, healthier, they'll, their cells will vibrate more, and uh They'll be on the road, better traveled, and uh, they'll be optimizing their life and living. So how does vital force relate to spiritual energy? Well, basically, this is when I met Tommy Rosa when we did our book, you know, Heaven and Earth. I mean, um, one of the things that I learned as a cardiologist, and I was an invasive cardiologist where I would take, I would take a lot of people to the cardiac catheterization laboratory and, and do studies on them and I treated hundreds and hundreds of people with acute heart attacks, but I, I learned about life after death experience um, sort of the hard way. And uh, years ago, before Ray Moody came out with his books, uh, nobody talked about a life after death experience because, you know, people thought that they were crazy, you know, when they went through a tunnel of light or, you know, when they went to the other side. And then as a, as a cardiologist, I would have people um, uh, where this, this, taboo of talking about it was lessened and being a psychotherapist at the same time, you know, I would have people tell me, uh, doc, um, I really saw blackness when, uh, I had that cardiac arrest and I said, Oh, and, and, uh, you get, everything was black. Everything was dark. I didn't see a tunnel of light. And I had patients who had, you know, frightening life after death experiences. And I had many patients who had the opposite. And, uh, when I met Tommy Rosa, it all came together because when you meet a person who's, who's actually been to the other side and back and spent, let's say, a lo quote, a long time on the other side and had many, many experiences of the other side, uh, then uh, this will turn anybody's head, including my own. And uh, um, I thought it was a gift for me to, to meet uh, Mr. Rosa because um, I actually, you know, became best friends with somebody that was in the heavenly realm. And uh, it's kind of interesting. I'm, I'm lecturing on this in Montreal in a, uh, in a week or so about, uh, about heaven and earth and about heart and soul and the connection between heart and soul. Because I'll, I'll tell you this, Gwilder, Tommy told me this, but I never realized that life is programmed for many of us. I mean, I never really realized this until I met Tommy, but I think I went into cardiology 
for, you know, unconscious reasons. And, uh, you know, a lot of us choose jobs for an unconscious reason. And, and I think that uh, for me, you know, going to cardiology was I was probably looking for my own heart, so to speak, you know. <laughs> oh, isn't that and I learned that oh, through Tommy, uh, you know. And, and uh, so it's, you know, I think a lot of us choose professions, uh, you know, because remember this. I learned this through, with Alexander Lowen a long time ago, that it's our unconscious drives that are stronger than our conscious drives. Mm. And, uh, and what about bringing those two together? People. What about oh, bringing you bring those, those together? Oh, my gosh. Well, then you're, then you're, you're sort of in truth. Uh, you know, whenever you bring a conscious and an unconscious drive together, uh, then you're living your truth. And this is what I learned again. Whenever you're living your truth, <laughs> living your truth is really healing the body. Because once you live your truth and understand your truth, uh, I believe it's the major deterrent to disease. Again, it's like those corporate executives who were staring at a sailing. They hated their jobs. They didn't want to be in their jobs. They didn't have the passion in their work. You know, they did it because, you know, it brought, it brought home money. It, it brought home prestige, et cetera, et cetera. But they were living in a false self. And whenever well, I, you live in a it. false self, you invite heart disease into your life. I love this idea of, of living in truth because truth, it's, it's an it's a interesting thing. I mean, we think of truth as telling the truth or this or that, but ultimately truth means in alignment with all of your parts, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, and on down the road, doesn't it? It does. It does. Whenever you're in truth, you're, you're really in synchronicity. In other words, your vibratory state, I believe, is high. Uh, t- truth is, is so important. Look, when when... People fail a lie detector test, you know, they're in a, a lie detector test uh, where they're lying, so to speak. Their autonomic nervous system is in conflict. In other words, uh, that's why you get a blip. And uh, whenever you're in conflict, uh, this creates illness. And I'll tell you this, Gwilda, I've treated hundreds and hundreds of people with high blood pressure. I had a few people in my lifetime as a heart specialist. I could never get their blood pressures down, never get them down. I mean, with weight reduction, with pharmaceutical drugs, stress reduction, you name it, until I realized that these people were habitual liars. And once I realized that, and it came across by accident, once I realized that even they were lying to me, and, you know, because, you know, when a person is habitually lying, they think they're almost like telling the truth, you know, they, they, they become psychopathic in a way. Once I realized I was dealing with a, a misrepresentation of the truth, and I explained it to those patients that when you live out of truth, you're triggering your autonomic nervous system. I can't get your blood pressure down. It was like a miracle. Their blood pressures came down when they wow. finally started telling the truth. This is, well, there, this is the joy of being a of, doctor. You learn about this stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, there, there's other ways of lying, though, too, isn't there? It's like, so say you're in the job that you love, but a relationship you hate. That's, oh, again, yeah. lying, oh, yeah. yes? Oh, my God. Gwilda? I have heard this a dozen times. I'll stay in this relationship until it kills me. And mm. guess what? It killed them. Wow. You see what I mean? Mm-hmm. You just mentioned it. So, you know, sometimes people need to separate from their spouses and, and uh, you, know, uh, f- you know, find a new direction in their life. I mean, oh, my God, I heard that, and I'm, I'm getting the chill on that where, you know, doctor, I'll stay in this marriage till it kills me, you mm. know? <sighs> so, so I, I, again, you know, uh, the truth has to come out in, in many, many ways. And, and, and I believe the more truthful we are with ourselves, the, the more we are in sync with our emotional, spiritual, and physical domains. And whenever you're in sync, you're healing. You're, you're yeah, vibrating. You're, you're vibrating. vibrating. There's no restriction then. The, it, don't you think that this uh, being out of integrity is the, the main cause of the problems that we're having? And yet we're living in a time that's prophecies the the, the truth can't hide. These are the days the truth can't hide. So we're really being confronted with these um, discrepancies in our life, aren't we? We are. And the consciousness of the planet is increasing. And, and, and again, since, the, since the, the, the vibrant energy, even the human response of the earth, which is the, the humming of Mother Earth, the grounded energy, it's doubled recently. So the fact that the consciousness of the planet is increasing, the more we tell the truth – the more we're going to vibrate, you know, with the planet's energy. And this is why I think truth is going to be the ultimate healer of mankind. And isn't the, that increase in frequency that the planet's putting out, putting extreme pressure on all those places that we aren't in integrity? Yes, because whenever you have more energy, heightened energy, this can allow for more chaos to happen. 
Uh, you're right about that. Chaos happens, then everything breaks loose. You know, fear, panic, et cetera, et cetera. In other words, living in fear is uh, a very, very negative emotion. And, and, and that's why, you know, I mentioned it before. If a person is in fear and at the same time is petting a, a dog, <laughs> that dog with the unconditional love they're given that, that person can hopefully, hopefully get them out of living in fear. And, mm. and that's why some of these props are really important in our lifetime. And so uh, if we, we're just, just about out of time, but if we go cir- full circle, we're talking about love and integrity and being in alignment with yourself uh, as the antidote to fear and depression, yes? Yes, absolutely. Whenever you live authentically, you know what I mean? Whenever you're authentic, how do you say that? What's, say the word, Gwilda. <laughs> you say that. Right. <laughs> authenticity, I believe, yes. That's it. When, whenever you live in your true self, you're optimizing your health. Uh, blood pressure gets more stabilized. Heart rate variability gets stabilized. Conversations between the brain and the heart are clearer. I mean, everything works when you're authentic. Mm. And when you're authentic, you don't, I mean, my opinion is you, you really thwart off illness and disease. You know, this has just been a wonderful hour. I can't thank you enough for coming on the show. We could go on for a couple more, but as always, time has flown, and now we're out of it. Dr. Sinatra, thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, thanks. Thank you so much, and I'll be happy to do it again. I mean, there's so many things we could talk about. I mean, we didn't even talk about the Mediterranean diet or Absolutely. olive oil or the secret sauce of anti-aging medicine. You know, we, you know there's so well, many things our- you can talk about to make people healthier, so this was great. I'm, I'm oh, glad we talked about the spiritual, emotional aspects of healing. I, I love this. Our guest this hour has been board-certified cardiologist and author of Health Revelations for Heaven, Dr. Sinatra. His website, heartmdinstitute.com. For our amazing past episode collection, visit our website, www.missionevolution.org. This has been Mission Evolution Radio Show with Gwilda Wiecka on the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Join us next time as this mission continues, bringing information, resources, and support to our evolving world. With a passion for divination, Cooch Daniels, lifelong professional reader and author, invites you on a mystical journey on the Mystics, Oracles, and Divination radio show. During her time with you, you'll meet visionaries, readers, energy light workers, and healers who work with the tarot and other oracles. As a psychic guide, Cooch Daniels will be seeking to discover both new age and traditional methods to deepen your mutual understanding of how you can further awaken your intuition and abilities to work with your divinatory channels. Cooch will end each hour of her show answering your questions and a meditative contemplation for prosperity, well-being, and good fortune. Join Cooch Daniels and her guests on the Mystics, Oracles, and Divination Radio Show at www.xzbn.net. And you can always email Cooch at mysticarts 4 you at yahoo.com. That's M-Y-S-T-I-C-A-R-T-S, the number four, at yahoo.com. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com 
or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the Exxon from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember Exxon Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light.